It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode is brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Cabela's, Antler Action, Spot Shooter Archery, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, Family Traditions Tree Stands, and Badass Slingshots. Right on right. You all situated now? Yeah. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal. Uh, I'm your host, Mike Adams, and, and Danny read the falls over there, and you're all discombobulated. I was discombobulated. I had my head, headphones on wrong. <laughs> well, I can't help you with that, man. That's your own fault. Hey, you just be happy. Drink your coffee that I brought I am, you again this week. Thank you for the coffee. See, got you started. I, I need it tonight, man. I am. You a little bushed? I'm pie-eyed, man. Man, you went to Ohio. You got to have some big buck stories for me, don't you? I do have a buck story for you that I haven't told you about. Yes, I do. Excellent. See, you got it. It's kind of you... sad. It really is. Uh, it is a sad story. Um, so you got a big buck is what you're going to tell me. No, somebody got a big buck. With a car? Yeah, and I saw it die. Oh. Yep. Coming home this morning, dry, driving down the road, down or driving north on 75. You know you know what northern Ohio is like. It's all cornfields. Yes, it is. On the left and the right, you know, and... <laughs> There was a little patch of woods running off the edge there between two cornfields. And as I'm coming up to it, I just kind of, I see something and I'm like, that was a buck that just, I mean, that was a deer's head that just flopped over, you know? And as I got closer, I'm like, it is a deer. It is a big buck. And it was like, what happened is, and I don't know if it jumped the fence and I saw the blur and then its head go down, but I definitely saw the head sticking up in the air and then flop down to the ground. Okay. And it had a big rack on it. Yeah. So, I think somebody in the woods probably shot it and it jumped over. I don't think it got hit by a car. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, some lucky dude. I think. He I did. don't know. I don't know. But my wife, she goes, well, "Aren't you going to stop and go get it?" And I'm like, "Number one, I'm, I'm I'm on a time crunch. Number two, I don't have a tag for it, which makes it illegal. Number three, well, where are we going to put it?" Yeah. She goes, "Well, on top of the car." And I'm like, "Oh, I'm going to be able to put a deer on top of your car." Oh, there you go. And she agreed to that. Uh-huh. 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 How big was it, you think? Um, It was at least as big as that one right there, above your head. Okay. You know, I don't know if it had eight points, but I mean, it, was, it looked like a... You saw the rack. It, it, yeah, it looked like it was... Wasn't no point. spike? No. And it was pretty tall, looked pretty wide, it had some mass to it. Really? Yeah. yeah. Bucks are on the move, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. They're showing up in my backyard and... Making faces at me and I seen that, seen a photo of it. Yeah, you see that? It's that time of year, man. It's Pre- that time of year. I haven't seen bucks all year except for little nub bucks and pre ruts over, man. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's he. He came in and mm-hmm. he was fueling up for the for the marathon about to begin. Yeah, it was a it was a beautiful morning this morning. Beautiful day yesterday. Was it foggy down by you? No, no, it wasn't. Um, it was foggy up here. Today would have been a great morning to be out in, in a field on the edge of a field with that yeah, fog, right? Waiting for it to lift. Waiting for it to lift. Let them walk in it where they can't see. Right on. Right on. No, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we made a, a quick trip down to Nor. Let me get this right. Northwestern Ohio University. There you go. In Lima, Ohio. Um, went down there with my youngest boy, Jake, and my wife. We went down, and you know, he's a senior this year, and he's looking at uh, his career opportunities, and it's, uh, he, he wants to mess with cars. That time of, of his life yeah. where he's going to look at Moving on. Yeah, he wants to he wants to turn a wrench on cars, but he wants to do it in a high performance uh, aspect of it. And they got a pretty good program down there, so we went down, and looked at it, and looked it over, and spent the dude. I, I got out of I got out of work late Friday. Come home, got to bed, finally got to sleep maybe by twelve thirty one o'clock. Got up at three forty five a.m. after about two and a half three hours sleep. Climbed in the car, drove down, dropped the car off at Cabela's though. On the way down. You did. <laughs> and uh, we made our way down, toured the campus, then went to the in-laws uh, who, who uh, have a new place. They just bought a new house, their retirement home, uh, about 45 minutes south of the school. Beautiful lake and uh, Indian Lake. Okay. And uh, I asked Cody. It's in Cody and Mara's back door. And I said, uh, have you ever heard of Co- uh, Indian Lake, Cody? And he goes, yeah. I said, oh, yeah. He goes, yeah, I've only fished it about 100 times. Oh, so he kind of <laughs> knows it. Yeah, I was like, okay, right on. He said, it's a great bass lake. So hopefully we'll have a few stories to tell about that here in this next summer. So got well, it sounds morning. like you got got, yeah. got a, a guide to go out on the lake. Mm-hmm. You got a place to stay on the lake. Mm-hmm. 
be able to pull, pull some big old lunkers out of there. I hope so. But uh, yeah, got up this morning early, blasted back, and stopped at Cabela's and paid homage to them and worked for Vortex for the day. And but you gained an hour of sleep last night. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it. Dude, I, I tell you, I'm I, I've, I'm running on fumes. That's why I appreciate this coffee. You know, it, it's one of those things we gain an hour of sleep, but yeah. I just don't like coming over here. And now this is this is the real time now. Oh, yeah, it's dark. It's dark. Yeah. You know, I know in the summer we'd come over and it would still be mm-hmm. light out, but it's For dark. like three hours? Yeah, and it's, it's now dark. It's so. dark. But I tell you what, this weather... Mm-hmm. Uh, 65 degrees out, and it's beautiful here. We're talking the rut and everything, and yeah, y- you're gonna do some sweat and getting out to your stand. Yeah, I don't get to get out until the 19th, though. That's a problem. Well, I might, I might stroll out here with the bow one day here on well, then, state land. Aren't you gonna be out for opening day? No, I, I gotta work. Okay, if I do, I gotta do it here. Okay, you know, and, and in that's the shotgun the, zone. We're coming up here in Michigan, uh, we're about seven, eight, nine days out from mm-hmm. the opening of. Another holiday in this town. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, this warm weather is kind of bizarre in a way. It is, yeah. Because the last two days have been phenomenally warm mm-hmm. and sunny. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's hardly any moon. And, uh, you got super moon coming, though. You know, I saw that. That yeah. it's going to be the biggest. 14th of November. Right. Actually, I'm going to do some filming of that uh, with the Vortex spotting scope and uh, the phone scope. Hopefully, you have a clear night. Yeah, well, actually, I'm um, I'm already looking at weather and making plans, and I'm going to tr- actually try to videotape it for the TV station as well as myself. Okay. So I'm kind of double dipping on that, but uh, yeah, I'm going to try to get out and get set up somewhere outside of town for them and do it. Um, I've got a couple, two or three days leading into it, and two or three days leading out of it. So I've got a window of opportunity there that it may not be full, full, but it, it'll be. It'll be yeah. Yeah, it'll it'll be the next best See, thing. Fourteenth, I'll be up at camp, so I will. I'll keep an eye out for it. Yeah, you do that. I'm sure I won't miss it. I don't want to. I don't want to see your super moon. No, that's okay. You won't. No. The one thing I did see from you this weekend, I really don't want to. Uh, I'm kind of upset. What's up with the Christmas tree? Uh, call Kelly, my oldest, and you can explain to her. It's not even Thanksgiving yet. We haven't even thought about picking the turkey out, let alone. Eating it. They haven't even got turkeys on sale yet. No. And you're putting up a stinking tree. I haven't even taken my shotgun in the store yet. The only tree that you ought to be up is, is a tree stand. I will Climb, be next week. Climbing up a tree. Next, Yeah, next weekend I'll be up a tree. Wow. I, I couldn't believe that when I saw it's, that. It, and, well, that was just the tree you saw. Today mm-hmm. it got all decorated and everything. All the decorations went up and everything. Wow. You know something else that really disappointed me this week I saw? I've seen something on Facebook. Well, you know... You know what I'm talking about. Well, actually, I've seen a several things on Facebook. <laughs> well, I've seen, yeah. I you know, it, it's it, it's the world we live in and the mm-hmm. social media. I've seen some nice bucks that'll come down. Yeah. They've gotten some big... I see Charles Byram. Yeah. Out in Iowa got it. Iowa, one. yeah. He, he nailed one this week. Yeah. So, you know, and congratulations to him. And obviously, the jury's all are tagging. I think he, they, I, the last time I saw was one in Iowa. Mm-hmm. I think one in Missouri. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, in the DNR pose with, uh, uh, not Mark, but uh, what's the other one's name? <laughs> I forget now. I oh, the juries? Yeah. Oh, now you're going to I got to put you on the spot. Yeah, you are. So the old man. Yes. Uh, but Terry. He, Terry Drury, yes. Yeah, the DNR actually stopped him and uh, posed with a picture with him with his deer. I thought it was pretty cool. Hey, when you got one of the best in the world, right? Yeah, Might right get a picture with the guy. Right on. But yeah, Facebook is just uh, coming up with some unique... Uh, well, it's good that these guys that are hunting with bows don't play in the NFL. You know, it's one of those things that, uh, yeah, I think uh, they would be flagged for uh, a 15-yard penalty. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Yep, exactly. You if know. you guys don't know what we're talking about, the NFL has now banned the celebration hand motion of shooting a bow. You cannot shoot a bow, uh, make the motion of shooting a, a bow in, in the NFL after scoring... Anytime, I guess, but scoring a touchdown. And they're calling it the reason why? They're calling it, uh, uh, the exact verbiage was. Um, Did it have to do with violence? It was a violent, it was mimicking a violent act. Okay, so unbeknownst to anybody who's never watched the NFL or just watched one play prior, aren't they trying to take each other's heads off every play? Pretty much. But yet making a, like you're shooting a bow, is, is a violent act. Yeah. Yet when the guy's got the ball, what are you trying to do? <laughs> well, or you can beat the crap out of your significant other on camera in an elevator and get a two-game suspension. You know. Well, if we're going to go down that route. 
you know, there's, but, there's, there's several of them that, uh, and, yeah. I, and I'm not trying to equate domestic violence with making a hand motion of shooting a bow, but I'm just saying it's just ridiculous. That, it, and, and, and probably you, if you can't do the motion of a bow, I'm sure definitely a motion of the gun is probably. Oh yeah. You can't, can't pull out the six shooters and shoot the ground or shoot the air. So, you know, it, you know, the throat slash, they, they ban that. Oh so. yeah. They, they, you know, and it, it, it amazes me what they deem violent, but yet. They let it's, other things it's, go. It's a very, very violent game. You can take a knee. You want to go there? Y- you can take a knee. You want to go there? <laughs> you can take a knee and get chastised for it. Oh, no, they, they let that go on. But you get chastised out in public. But you know what? Do they have a right to do it? Yeah. But you know what? Because it's a right doesn't make it right. the right thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it takes a bigger man to stand up for what's right than what's wrong. Yep, exactly. But you know, it, it's the odd world we live in. It is. You it, know, when, speaking of odd, this is an odd segment. We really haven't covered a whole lot. No, it, it, it's one of those things where, like I said, we're nine days out from deer season. Mm-hmm. I hope to be in a tree by next weekend. Two days out from the election. You want to go there? <laughs> <laughs> I got something better than the election in two days, so I'm, <laughs> I'm good with that. You do? Yeah. What you got in two days? In two days, I will be. We'll have been married 25 years. You got married on the 8th of November. I did. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you. And where did we honeymoon? Our deer, deer camp. <laughs> nice we went deer up honey. to Mayo, uh-huh. Mayo, Michigan. But uh, no, me and the wife got married 25 years ago on a Friday on Tuesday. Be- better yet, poor Mrs. Default for putting up with you for 25 years. That takes quite a woman. Yeah, it does. I will uh, definitely attest to that. Anything um, special? Ain't going anywhere special? No, twenty five. That's a pretty know, big one. We've been uh, we've kind of been playing this all year. Been to concerts. Been to different places. Kind of like your birthday. It's it's an it, event. It, it's it, yeah, it is. It's 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 and anniversary. A... Tour to anniversary. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, no, she's a better shot than I am with a gun. So well, I'm that not, goes without saying. Well, yeah, not just about everybody's a better shot than I am. But <laughs> uh, no, so it's our anniversary, and we got to do that other little thing that's going on that day too. So. I look forward to that. It's going to be an interesting day. Yeah. Don't take a selfie in the booth. You cannot take a selfie while, ta- while voting in this in this state. And you you cannot wear uh, paraphernalia that represents a, either party. A, par- a party, correct? Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's what I thought. We were just discussing that before I came over. That's can I wear my NRA hat? I think you can. But you can't wear... Something that says Democratic or Republican. Right, right. I, I ain't worried about that. I, I'm not worried about it either. It's just... I, I am going to make a statement, though. You make a statement. I, I'm going to take a picture either before I go in or after. I don't know which yet. And on each finger on, on my voting hand... Actually, I'll probably do it on my left hand because I can't write with my left hand. Okay. I'm my right hand. I'm going to write the four names of the men who lost their lives in Benghazi on my hand when I vote because they can't vote. Exactly. That's, so if you haven't figured out now, you know who I'm voting for. Well, yeah. It's, but but the most important thing is, is get out and vote. The most important thing is to get out and vote. And if you haven't signed up to vote, you're too shame late. On, shame yeah. on you. Shame on you. You're too late. And if you don't vote, don't give me no crap about saying, well, I'm not going to vote because I don't like either one. It, 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 it's, your, it's your civic duty to get out and vote. Exactly. And it's just one of those things. It's going to be a... It's gonna be a it's a war no matter what. It, it, it's it's going to be... It's, they're already planning on starting coverage tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. Mm-hmm. Yeah, guess who gets to be a part of all this you, garbage? You do! Yeah. You're going to be prime time in it. Yeah. Tuesday night? Yeah, I go I go into work late Tuesday and I stay late. Yeah, so... I don't know you go into work late Tuesday? An hour late. Oh, just an hour. Yeah. I, I thought... Oh. Yeah, their time shift to me, so... For for the... Because of the election. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, speaking of shifting some time, why don't we shift our time right now outside... And uh, take our yeah, first let's break. get out in the woods. So we'll come back. We'll talk a little more about the outdoors. We'll be right back after this. I shoot PSE because I like one pin to 40 yards. I shoot PSE for the perfect combination of feel and performance. I shoot PSE because you can shoot lighter poundage and increase arrow speed. I shoot PSE for the fastest bows on the planet. I shoot PSE because my livelihood depends on my bow. I shoot PSE because better engineering makes a better bow. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. Experience PSE. Experience performance. 
We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families afield. What are you doing? Feeling yourself there? Hey, I'm just getting pumped up for this next segment mm-hmm. of the Up North Journal podcast, session number two. I thought you were massaging your chest. No, 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 no. Just <laughs> loosening myself up, getting ready. Hopefully in the next week and a half or so, dragging out some deer, get my skin and knife, get all, you know, got my, uh, actually, I got, uh, which knife do I got? I got my NWTF knife that I got, my dual set that I got from uh, signing up as a member. So I got that. I'm good. Okay. All right. Well, I gave you a knife last week. And you got a knife, too. Yeah, I got them laying right here, man. You know, and... Been now, waiting on, I've been waiting on these for over a year. Yeah. It, it's one of those things. I ordered those in September of 2015. It's now November 2016. Actually, they came in October. So it took 13 months. But they're here. They're here. And actually, um, they actually, that's the second time they've been shipped. Right, the first time they were shipped, um, they got lost. They kind of got lost. What we're talking about is a while back, um, I was talking with Chip Hailstone of Life Below Zero on Discovery Channel, formerly a UNJ team member, but and, he had to leave for good reasons. Yeah, yeah, for 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 bigger pastures, obviously. But uh, he he was talking about making ulus. Ulus is a, a uh, native Alaskan. Uh, people's knife it's a knife that they use it's a very distinct design that the way they use uh the knife and basically basically it, it's something that's been around for it, for a long i mean hundreds and hundreds of years they've right used it's a handheld um actually i was just looking at that how would you describe that thing you know actually if you look at it and if you were to put a longer handle on it it'd be like an axe it'd be like an axe yeah but it's a, it's a thin blade it's real thin it's thin but sharp Sharp as a razor. Yeah, and uh, basically it gives you some good leverage to to either whether you want to cut meat or you want to skin mm-hmm. or scrape or scrape scraping of a hide mm-hmm. um, slice. Pff, this thing will do anything. This is better than the Ginsu. It is, you know. And these were handmade by by Chip, and you got these a couple weeks back, and uh, I kind of want to I kind of want to take mine with me and hopefully I'll use it. Yeah, yeah, because I, I kind of see some advantages. That I think I could use it, yeah. especially when you know, open. Hopefully, opening up a, a buck because yeah. I can't shoot a dill. Actually, if you, if you look on the, uh, the website, you want to Google it. It's U L U is the way it's spelled. Ulu, um, or you, you can watch Life Below Zero, and you can actually see see these guys use. Agnes it. uses it, it all, all the time, time. Yeah. whether she's doing a seal or she's fish. doing fish, a caribou. His kids use them all the time when they're 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 working cutting meat up and stuff. Right, you but, know, uh, he, but he made a bunch of these, and and we bought some, and they they finally got here. So yeah, and you know, it, you want to talk about a, a simple thing. Yeah, you know this this metal is basically uh, is it's a blade. It's a blade in two pieces of wood and two screws and two screws. That's it. Yeah, you know, and basically, but the design is pretty doggone cool. It is, you know, and you know, you get your finger behind that, and you just kind of press down, and you can get your whole hand on it. Press down with your wrists. I wonder how long those have been around. I mean, you know, as far as... I bet school. you these have been around a long time. This looks like something they they came up with. They probably started out... With a stone? With a stone. I'm firing my computer up here. I'm going to Google it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it started out probably being a stone tool. Mm-hmm. And then eventually just it, it became a metal tool when mm-hmm. that came around. But, uh, yeah, these are... Not, they're not heavy. They're not that heavy. No. So it's not like swinging an axe, but, you know, I'd, they're pretty darn cool. And, uh, you know, again, a simple tool that's been around for an awful long time. Pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. So. Well, as soon as I get fist fired up here, I'll, I'll, I'll Google it and do a little research here while we're, we're yeah, exactly. rolling through this. Segment. So, but thanks to Chip and Agnes 
And uh, thanks to the U.S. Mail Service, it finally got him here. <laughs> the second time. The second time. Yeah, you know that was the unfortunate thing is the fact that he had to make them twice to get him here because, uh, in I wasn't the only one. There yeah, was, that's there, what he said. He said uh, he, he'd send them out, but you weren't the only one. So some people yeah. lost theirs and in, uh, in the mail and didn't get them and. That's that's just the kind of guy he is too. I mean, he he made good on it and, and took care of it, and we got him. And, uh, and, and you know, pretty cool. I, you watch the show when they use those things. It's kind of neat to watch them right in their house take care of their uh, their game that they're working on. Okay, you've been married to your wife for twenty five years. Yes. You, let's say you go up, you shoot a buck or a doe. It doesn't matter. You bring it back. You know, you feel dressed, but you've got the cape still on it, the hide and everything, and the head and. You walk in the front door and you drag this thing in on, on the floor and you start cutting it up right there. What would she say? I'm sure I'm dead. <laughs> well, I better, I better. Okay, so let me rephrase that. If I better have, I better take it into the kitchen, and I better have, and I better be getting it done, whatever I'm doing, and I better clean up my mess. So you know, there's some pictures of some different styles that. that yeah, do. that's what I'm, I'm looking at here. It's. Uh... It says it's an all-purpose knife traditionally used by Inuit, I want to say, Aleut women, basically from that area, like the Aleutian area. Yep, the Aleutian Islands I up mean, there. They're, they're from Norfolk, Alaska, um, and, and she she's Inuit. She's yep. from uh, originally, families from been from that area for thousands years, of years. Thousands. You know? Um, utilize the applications diverse to skinning, cleaning animals, cutting uh, a child's hair, cutting food, and if necessary, trimming blocks of snow and, use, and ice used to build an igloo. So you can cut your hair with it. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to shave your head. Um, the history behind it is they've been found to date back as early as 2500 BC. So that's a long time. That's, that's a, like 4500 years, that's roughly. A long time. Traditionally, the Ulu word Ulu would be passed down from generation to generation. It was believed that an ancestor's knowledge was contained within the Ulu, and thus would also be passed on. Pretty cool. There's some yeah. tradition to it in the yeah. family sense yeah. that, you know, it's you make one, you're making yeah. it for a special purpose. Right. And then you pass it down to your kids and then they pass it down. So it looks to me like one could go a long ways in a family. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, the basic, I guess, shape of it looks like it's kind of been around for quite a while. I mean, we're looking at one here. Um, That's almost like a dual handle there. Yeah. That, that one there. But you go two up on, the, on there and that kind of looks like the blade that we have. Right. You know. So. It looks like, you know what, I bet you, when you make it and you make your design, that becomes kind of like your family design. I wonder if it's, yeah, like a family design or family, like a crest. So exactly. Say, you know, like, I don't know. Exactly. You know, it's... it's It'd be uh, interesting. I'd have to ask them. Yeah, it's a pretty cool tool. So, but that's off of Wikipedia, you know, what little bit of information's here on it. But, uh, but yeah, basically it's been around a long time. They use them uh, to this day. I mean, I, I see it on the show all the time. Her, yeah, I use them, them. So, you know, but, very cool. Uh, Hopefully, get to use mine here in a couple weeks. Well, let me know how it works. I will. Well, if I use mine before you, you do. So. Do you use your Ulu before I do? Yeah. See, I made a rhyme. You did. <laughs> well, let's rhyme our way right outside for our next break. Let's do that. We're going to step outside. We'll take our next break. We'll be right back after this. So, what do you do when you've completely redefined the way bows are engineered? When you've reached the pinnacle and the band starts playing your victory song? You start a revolution out of thin air. Introducing the all-new PSE Carbon Air, engineered with true carbon technology to be the lightest high-performance bow in the world. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families afield. All right, we're back through the segment of the show. Just got done talking about Ulu's cutting up meat. Yeah, you know it's it's all tasty good. treats. Ooh. 
You know, Mara posted a picture. She's got her did deer in the that, freezer. Did you see that freezer full? 78 pounds of deer meat out of that, that thing. Was, that was a big deer. It was a huge deer. A gargantuan deer. deer. Now it's off to the taxidermy. Yeah. Check so, back in a year. So if one were to get a deer, you and I have already talked about this. We were talking about making some summer sausage this year. Summer sausage and jerky is... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's about that time. you got a new smoker you got to break in. Got the smoker. Haven't picked up the grinder yet. That's the next step. And I'm, I've been waiting patiently for about three or four months. I'm waiting for it to go on sale. You know what? It should be coming up probably around Thanksgiving. I'm going to lay odds on. I was talking to them today at Cabela's, and that's what they figured. They didn't know for sure. I, actually, I just saw the new ad for the next two weeks, and it's not in that ad. So, so I'm thanks, thinking, between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yeah, Black, Black Friday sale probably. You're going to need a Thanksgiving or a Christmas gift. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not buying it for you, though. Just no, get that right. And buy myself a Christmas gift. There get you what go. I want. Exactly. So, but, yeah, um, get that uh, get that grinder. and uh, You've got the meat tumbler. I got the meat tumbler. You got the grinder. Mixer. So you need we, some casings, though. Well, speaking of all this good stuff, mm-hmm. we got... Uh, a question this week from Charles Byron out in Iowa. He wanted he wanted your recipe for your summer sausage. He does. I've been holding out, I guess, because I completely forgot. Charles, I found out what he uses. Yeah. It, it, believe me, not a lot of effort went into this recipe. No. <laughs> but I'm not going to tell you here on the show. You can contact me. <laughs> You're not going to tell him? I'm trying to remember it. I'm going to tell him privately. You gotta let this out slowly, cause this is this is high tech stuff. I thought you told me you just pick it up at the store. The ingredients? It's not a. It, it's not a. Oh, it's, it's not, not a prepackaged deal. It's not a prepackaged deal. Oh, uh-uh. oh, I thought that was what you told me in the no, break. No, no, no. The casings I pick up at the store. Oh, okay, all right. Cause I was looking today. I, on my lunch hour, I got done eating lunch there at Cabela's. And what do you do but go look around the store? Of course. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm wandering around, you know, going over, and I'm kind of eyeing the the meat grinder you know the one i'm going to pick up oogling it you know drooling on it yeah and uh you know i thought well okay i got that and i looked at make sure it had all the contents to be able to stuff sausage casings and all that kind of stuff i'm like well okay so now i I need to go look at mixes for sausage and i need to look at casings so i'll go over and look at the casings they got buy them in 25 or you can buy them in 50 counts you know for summer sausage and then they got the snack sticks so i'd like to make some of them too then I went over and started looking at the prepackaged mix for different things. And I was amazed at how many different How many things. varieties there are out there? Not varieties, but even even different things like breakfast sausage ma- with maple in it. Um, you know, summer sausage, smoky sticks, um, snack sticks. Yep. Um, different pepperoni and all these different sausages you can make. Polish sausage, but... In, Italian sausage. Italian sausage. And inside the box has got all the mix. Yeah, it's got all the mix inside. To do 25 pounds of meat. But it also has the casings in there. Right. It, so. It's a one-shot deal. You buy the whole thing. You're going to be making Polish sausage. That's your your kit for the, the 25 pounds that you're okay. going to use up. So now, obviously, you don't want to give away your secret on the show. Um, but is it is it okay, basic, so, so is it basic the, summer sausage? It is. It's okay. It's really basic. Okay. It's... Um, the casings I go with, though, are the foot-long, inch-and-a-half by foot-long ones. Okay. Like a breakfast sausage type. Because I do mine in the oven, mm-hmm. and that they, they fit better. Okay. Now, it'd be interesting to see with your smoker, because mm-hmm. we can hang them in that smoker. Right. How far, you know, it's going to be a foot-long if we can get one rack in or two racks in or, or how much we can do. Okay. That would be interesting. Yeah, we'll have to play with that a little bit and right. figure it out. Might have to cut them in half. Right, because I think they're three foot long, or well, no, you can no foot and a half long. You can buy them twelve inches in length. The, okay, the casing itself. Okay, because an inch in diameter by twelve inches long. Because every time that I've gotten them from the butcher shop, they have the big, the big. They're two or three foot long. They're huge. They're 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 the big. Yeah, they're the big mm-hmm. three inch diameter. And by I always 24. cut them into thirds, right? And then rewrap them and right. freeze them. No, no, no. I I do the small casings. It's just better for putting them in the freezer for if you want to give some away. You're not giving them this this hunk of meat. You're giving them yeah. a, a stick like I brought you. Right. And well, uh, I see where I rank. Exactly. <laughs> you know. Hey, you get a full stick. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's, it's real. It's a simple recipe. Mm-hmm. It's just working with it to figure out what what you like, what you like, and maybe adding crushed red pepper mm-hmm. or or maybe uh, cheeses or something right. like that. I did see. There's two that caught my eye. Today at Cabela's. I mean, they got the basic, what they call hunter, 
Hunter's Summer Sausage. Then they got regular Summer Sausage. And then they had cracked black pepper and garlic. And I was like, ooh. And then they had jalapeno. And I was like, ooh. It's like, take both of those, mix them together, and do 50 pounds. <laughs> there you go. And you, in, if you got a grinder, it's going to go a little bit better. And then yeah. if, if you want to add cheese to it, if you want to add a, mm-hmm. a pepper jack to it or American American jack. Right. We just got to make sure we get the high heat cheese. The high heat cheese. Yeah. Or else you will get a melting effect and it doesn't go over so well. Okay. It's a special cheese for the sausages. It's just a higher, it doesn't melt at a higher, it takes a higher temperature, temperature to melt, melt it. it down. Gotcha. Right. And when you slow do them, it won't do that. Okay. So yeah, I think we're cooking at what, like 150 to 200 degrees? Yeah. And slow, you, yeah. slow cooking them, right? Exactly. So, but yeah, no, it, there is so much stuff out there and we got to get that grinder and we got to sit down and get a little video for everybody. And mm-hmm. Absolutely. You and I got to spend some time in the kitchen. Yep. Probably something we can do over the winter. Absolutely. Well, you know, here in our kitchen, the way we got our, our kitchen laid out since we've had everything redone, um, we've got that big counter space. Yeah. So we can work right there in the middle of the kitchen and set up a video camera and, and all that kind of good stuff. And Exactly. So, yeah. But it, it's fun. I kind of like it. It's fun. Yeah. I get the kids involved usually. And, you know, whether you're, you got somebody hand cranking it or you got somebody tumbling the meat. And mm-hmm. It's just fun. It, it could be a, you know, it's it's the family event thing. You yeah. Know, you get everybody involved yeah. and. Uh, Nobody wants to get involved in the cutting of the deer, though. No, they always disappear. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like doing that by myself. See, but so, but no, I'm looking forward to it. You gotta get that grinder, and then we can have some have some fun with it. I think you got some hamburger still. Guess I got a little bit of hamburger left from last year, and uh, we we got one dough from a family member this year already. Um, the only thing I did not, the only thing I took out of that meat that, that was given to me was the, the back straps. Right. Not gonna grind that stuff up. <laughs> no, nope. but I've I've got everything else, and it's it's just and it's all deboned. It's basically just big chunks of meat, and right? It, and it's all vacuum sealed, frozen. So when we we decide to go, we'll we'll weigh it and figure out what we've got for weight. Mm-hmm. And then I was told one pound for every four pounds, so twenty percent is that right, about right? Twenty percent, twenty twenty five percent. That's about right. Okay, or one for every three, depending on I don't know. Yeah, I'll ask around and do a little more, but that's basically where we're at with it. So, but yeah, we gotta we we'll get that. We can use up the hamburger quickly. That 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 goes quickly. Okay, it's already ground, so it helps. It's already ground. It's all ready to go. We just gotta. It's already mixed. You don't even count the mixing that in with or grinding it with the other pork. Yep, it's like a pork shoulder. What? No, that is that already pre mixed with pork, or is it? I just, believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So you're good. Yep. So we yep. can just season it and go. Season go. I don't have a lot left. I bet you I only got four or five pounds at the at, probably at the most. Well, that'd be a good for a good first batch. Yeah. Try the smoker out. Yeah, test run. Yeah. yeah. That'd be a good one for the smoker to test run it. So so Charles, he ain't giving up the secret. <laughs> I tried. You did. But it's really simple. Trust me, it's really simple. It's not rocket science here. PM him. Exactly. PM Pri- me. Private message him. Private message me, and I'll be glad to pass it on when I'm looking at the entire contents of the... Uh, my list. <laughs> Your baker's list? My baker's list. Yeah, All right. Exactly. You going to put an apron on? I wish I had an apron to put on. Oh, guess what Red's getting for Christmas? I need a deer hunter's apron. Yeah, he's getting an apron. All right. Oh, yeah. I better get a deer hunter's apron. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's fun. And and then we can even do some jerky, too. Mm-hmm. You know, if you got some what's left of your steaks or whatever, and we can cut them up into nicely thin pieces of meat and do them up. I'm getting hungry again. I need to go shoot some more deer. You know what? We got to get out next week and do some shooting of some deer because uh, I just hope I see something. Well, speaking of shooting, I went to the gun range this week. Did you really? Yeah. You didn't know about that. No, I didn't. We've been a little busy. So I'll tell you what. Let's step outside, take our last break. We'll save a little bit of time we got left, and we'll talk about uh, a little bit about that. All right. Let's do it. All right. Be right back after this. The 2015 Dream Season Decree is a deadly combination of speed and precision. It's built for the moments when time stands still. When the only thing that will break the silence is an arrow slicing a clean path to the kill zone. The bow of your dreams is a nightmare for big game. This is PSE's decree. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that many states It's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older. As a result, we have fewer young hunters. 
and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families afield. Welcome back. Last segment of the show. Yes, it is the last segment of the show. A a non typical Sunday evening for you. It is. Yeah. And actually, I gotta go to work. I know. If <laughs> they screwed up my schedule, man. Yeah. I'm but, all jacked up. I'm not. I, I had no sleep this weekend. I'm not getting any tonight either. So tune in for the eleven o'clock news. That's right. So as soon it as, will be a wonderful. As soon as we wrap this up, I'm going to do a quick edit on it and throw it up and, and save it as a draft. Go to work, finish it up, and then do the news. Come home and post. There you go. <laughs> so, But you went to the range? Yeah, I went to the gun range this week. I went um, Friday? Yeah, I went Friday. So two days ago? Yeah, a buddy of mine and I went. Oh. Um, what did you shoot? Paper. Did you kill it? Mm-hmm. Bullseyes? Mm-hmm. Excellent. Were you shooting rifles, pistols? Shooting the rifles. Uh, I want to get the deer up. Right, nah, get the, that's easy for me to say. Yeah. I want to get the deer rifles uh, verified again. You know, I haven't been shot in a while. Just, you know, I always like to go out right before season and just shoot them one more time to make sure they're good to go. Exactly. So uh, my daughter shoots 270 bolt action, and I, sh- I got the new 7 millimeter mag bolt action. What are you shaking your head for? The howitzer. Dude, that thing shoots like butter. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's it is it, it's the smoothest shooting gun I've had shouldered in so long. And then I got the thirty out six bolt action that I'm using as my backup. In nice. case, case you get up there and something happens, you you never know, man. You, I you, I always take two. You drop something, you know, bump the scope. You just you never know. You need to have a if backup. You, if you have the luxury to take more than one, take please it. do. Yeah. Because you're right. I mean. Whether you're walking along and or you or you stop and something mm-hmm. happens, the, the it gets bumped or yeah, you never know. You never know. You I never dropped them in the cabin. Yeah, dropped them out in the woods. Yeah, you, know, you lean it up against a tree and next thing it's yep, yep, and it falls over, and hits a rock, yeah, and breaks your scope. Luckily, there's a vortex on the seven. So so how did you shooting? You said you shot paper, which is yeah, good. Well, um, we went out. And he wanted to start at 50. I wanted to go right to 100, but he had a couple of rifles, and he he not shot in quite a while. He wanted to check them before he went up, you know, to his camp. Um, so we got out there, and he was having some issues with with this uh, 30-06 Browning that he had. And it was a name-brand scope. I don't want to say what it is because I'm not going to sit here and badmouth somebody because it's just one of them deals that was just a bad deal. But we couldn't get it on. Uh, it couldn't, get, couldn't get it on paper? It was on paper, but you know it was it was right. So we made a couple adjustments on it, brought it left, and then all of a sudden it was as far left as it was right. Okay. So, so we cut the adjustment in half to go back right, and it went back to the right where it was at originally. And we it, it was just it just kept floating. We could never get it on, you know, dead on. We got it within about inch and a half, and I'm like, all right, look, let's just go to the hundred yard range. His other gun was dead on, you know. And okay. I, and I shot I shot the. All three of my rifles, one shot. They were all just a touch high at 50, 50 yards. I'm like, that's that's cake. Let's go. Took them down. I shot all three of mine at 100 yards. Um, they were all cutting to the top of the bullseye at 100 yards. You know, and, and that's exactly where I was shooting about an inch high with my seven last year. And when I shot it at 200, it was dead on. So right, I think we talked about that. That with your seven. You you were at a hundred. You're actually shooting high because your bullet is still going, still climbing, still climbing yeah. before it hits the arc. Yep. So I, I was like, okay, I'm good, no problems here. We, we ran out of time. I was going to shoot at 200, but just we ran out of time because um, we spent a lot of time trying to work on that that 36 yeah. of his, and uh, it got to the point where he was doing the same thing at 100. We just could not get it in. And I, I'm thinking, you know, I went over, I looked at it, I made sure everything was locked down, all the the rings and everything were tight, and I'm like, we're shooting off a lead sled. Okay, I mean that. So you're not moving? No, no, and it's locked in tight, and we're shooting off the sled. And I said, you know, I don't mean any disrespect, but would you let me shoot it? And, he, and he's frustrated. He's like, yeah, definitely. He says, please. So I got down on it, locked in tight on it, got it on the sled, 
and really, you know, spent a lot of time making sure I squeezed off a good shot. And, you know, it was shooting. I can't remember left or right. Made the adjustment. Spent the time. Same thing. Going through the, everything. Making sure I squeezed off a good shot. And it just, it jumped way out. It, it was, it was, you know, I mean, I'm talking at 100 yards, you're making click adjustments. Right. You know, and that was the one thing about this. This scope did not have positive clicks. It was just, you, you turn, like turning a dial. It was smooth. It, was, it didn't lock in, which I didn't like. So, it, okay. you know what I'm saying? It just didn't. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It, should, it shouldn't be smooth. It should be, well. Click, 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 uh, click, click. Every scope is different. we've dealt with, and even crossbow scopes, click. Well, now, I will say this. On the 270 that my, that my daughter uses, my dad bought that gun years ago. Anybody used it has, it has a cheaper scope on it. It's a fairly decent name brand, but it's it's a cheaper scope, and it and it's smooth. It doesn't click. It's got very little, very minute little bumps you can feel, but it's but not it a click. It doesn't actually do the clicking. No, it's just like a little look, a little huh. tiny bump, and it, it, if you really don't feel it, if you, if you go you turn, right by it, you go right by. So you really got to pay attention to what you're doing. And uh, the same the same thing on the thirty out six. They both got the same. It's the same brand, and uh, but but they're both dead on. Didn't have any issues with them. So. Um, but so you, you shot this twice so no far. <laughs> well and then i made the adjustment and brought it and it came back over again the other way and it, it was just floating back and forth within an inch and a half either side of where you're you're shooting yeah didn't matter what adjustments i was making it was just when you made the adjustment it was, and i said dude i said this thing's the reticle's blown you know it, it's something's out on this it's just up and down dead on dead on right to left another story yeah we made the adjustments on it and brought it right to where it needed to be up and down and it stayed but it, it was just, it was impossible to get this thing to hold. You know, you'd make a, a minute adjustment and it would jump way one way or way the other way. So I said, dude, pack it. Pack it up, use your other rifle, and go get you a scope. Yeah. That or call the company and see what they'll charge to rebuild it for you and see if it's worth it. And uh, if not, get a Vortex. Exactly. Make the call, find out what. Yeah. I, I'm probably going to bet if there isn't a. a decent warranty on it that they'd say hey we'll rebuild it for you or something like that i'm it, sure it's got an unconditional warranty the scope's over 10 years old but it's a high dollar scope i mean it's so give them a call that's Maybe. why i said give them a call because you know it's one of their higher end scopes and i said you know it, it's worth it to find out absolutely if they charge you a couple hundred bucks it might be worth it to save that scope you know if they re- and find out what the warranty would be after that right yep so no it, it's definitely worth a call um like we've told other people at Cabela's that uh, with some other products, uh, just give them a call. Yeah. Sometimes customer service can end up being the best in the world. Yeah. And, yep. and that goes for any company out there. Yep. You know, other obviously some other companies are worth crud. Right. But yeah, no, it's worth the time to take the call, make the call. Understand that if you're going to call right now, it's in yeah. the heat of the seasons. Yeah. The, the well, that's the thing space. I said. Go put this thing in the safe, let it set, and then once season's over, give them a call. And uh, and just check in with and see you know and if you need to and then send it in ship it in let them let them rework exactly it. And you know what you know give them an opportunity set that up for for next year yeah give them the opportunity to make it right absolutely so. absolutely so I'm glad you were able to get out to the range it felt good man it was beautiful it was foggy that day was it yeah the fog was lifting just as we got there and man the leaves were like on fire it was beautiful. I took a couple pictures. I haven't posted them yet, but man, was it beautiful! Oh, I mean, there's some beautiful color out there with some of these trees. Yeah, most of it, most of it, uh, is past peak in the state. Yeah, it's, Are you still, still find find some good down Ohio. Beautiful, really. Oh my gosh, it's like every tree is on fire down there. It, oh, it's just wow. beautiful. I, man, I love this month we got from the two months of October, November. Yeah, it's yeah. just gorgeous. It's a good time to be outside. Absolutely, good time to be outside. Get out the 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 bow blind or the gun blind or the crossbow blind, whatever you're going to be doing. Get out and have at it. Absolutely. It's uh, it's going to be peak of the rut here in the next couple of weeks, I think. this after, uh, this after I think this warm spell is going to throw them off a little bit. but Yeah. You know, usually um, when I was working up there at uh, at that one club doing the deer necropsies, it always seemed like the deer, uh, the gestation period, they, they can kind of back time it. Yeah, they back the time it. Yep. And most of those times hit around November 18th to the 21st. And it's it's just right in that window. And it usually, I'm gonna say, there should be a pretty decent cold front coming through one of those days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So just like you see it, talk yeah. about it, play the cold front. Jerry Lambert's a big, you yeah, know, absolutely. Get out there, do some hunting. 
get after it. Absolutely. Anything else you want to throw in? Uh, no. Uh, I'll be up north next weekend. When, when, when are you heading up? Friday. Hmm, so we're going to have to do a show here pretty soon. Yeah. Or I'll have to give you a call. You have to give me a call. I'll be home this weekend, unfortunately. Okay. So, yeah, maybe we'll do that. We'll do a call. Get get you on Skype and... Uh, We'll, we'll have it working this time. We'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, because I'll be here using this computer. There you go. So we'll, we'll get us a, a, a report from the UP. You bet you will. And see what we can do. But uh, other than that, you guys, no matter where you're at, get out there, hit it hard, be safe. Talk to a guy at Cabela's today that was kind of worried about some things. Um, you know, they just opened up a lot of high-powered rifles in Indiana last year. They opened up more calibers this year. I talked with this guy for quite a while, and he came up with some really good points that I hadn't thought about, and we can discuss that at some other point in time. But uh, Yeah, save those. That would be good after-season yeah. discussion. You know, it, it got me to thinking a little more critically because, he, you know, he says, you guys that hunt up here in the north, he says, you're so used to using them because you hunt, you know, generally big timber. You know, because we don't use them down here in the southern part of the state. Only just the re- last two years that they've opened up uh, straight-walled cartridges. cartridges. Yeah, and, and, that, and those They're really starting in- to produce... Uh, I, they had one on one of the shows, uh, a straight wall. They were producing a gun that was specifically going to be a straight wall cartridge for Southern Michigan kind of thing. Okay, all right. You know, and he was cool with that. You know, he said, you know, you're basically talking shotgun type ranges. Yep. At that point, but uh, yeah, he, he opened my eyes to a few things, made me think a little more critically about some things, and uh, you know, I, I understand his point. Absolutely. I understand his point. So, but uh, yeah, it's just uh, you guys get out there, just be safe. Um, you know, know know where your target's at. Know what you're shooting. Identify at, your target, please. And know what's behind your target. Know what's behind your target. Identify your target, yep. so we don't have this Joe Schmo that was in the bushes getting shot. Yeah, finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. That's right. All right, folks, that'll do it for us this week. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Cabela's. Antler Action, Spot Shooter Archery, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, Family Traditions Tree Stands, and Badass Slingshots. Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.